Hello guys, my name is Bob. Welcome to the Excel Match channel. Today in this video, I'm going to talk about the bell shape curve, the basics of the bell shape curve. So supposedly I have a random variable y that represents the height of students in school. And uh, in this bell shape curve itself, we, if you were to notice, there is two things. Number one, mu. So mu is actually represented uh, as the mean, while sigma itself is the standard deviation which measures the dispersion or is actually the unit measurements of dispersion. Okay, supposingly the mean height of students in school is 1.6 meters and the standard deviation or the unit measurement of dispersion is actually 0 0.1 meters. If we were to look at this curve itself, the bell-shaped curve, the mean, like what I've mentioned, is 1.6 meters. Minus sigma represents one standard deviation below the mean. So in this case, the value is 1.5 meters. Sigma represents one standard deviation above the mean, or you can you know, put a plus sigma. This is equivalent to 1.7 meters. Negative 2 sigma represents two standard deviations below the mean, or equivalently in this example is 1.4 meters. 2 sigma above the mean is actually plus 2 sigma, or two standard deviations away above the, above the mean is 1.8 meters. Minus 3 sigma represents three standard deviations below the mean is 1.3 meters. While well, 3 sigma plus 3 sigma itself is actually 3 standard deviations above the mean, which is 1.9 meters. So far, so good. So the thing about it is that the area under the curve, so this is actually my curve itself, the area under the curve represents the probability. So in this case, it is actually the probability of a student with height between a certain value or within a certain range of values. Oh, within a certain range of heights. All right. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is the empirical rule. All right. So what does the empirical rule say? Within one standard deviation, or we call it SD, the probability of students with height between 1.5 to 1.7 meters is 68%. So what does it mean? It means that if you were to you know, randomly pick a student in school, the probability of this student's height to be between 1.5 and 1.7 meters, which is within the one standard deviation of the mean is actually 68%. So the notation is that the probability that y is between 1.5 and 1.7 is 68%. Okay, so the next thing, within two standard deviations of the mean, the probability of students with height between 1.4 and 1.8, so this is in other words, is 95 percent what does it mean so if you select a student in school this student's height or the probability of this student's heights to be between 1.4 and 1.9 sorry and 1.8 which is within two standard deviations of the mean is actually 95 percent so in other words the probability that y is between 1.4 and 1.8 meters is equals to 95% where y represents the height of the students in school. Last but not least, within three standard deviations of the mean. In other words, the probability of students with height between 1.3 meters and 1.9 meters is 99.7%. So in other words, if I were to select or if I were to get a student within the school itself. Okay, the probability of this student's height to be between 1.3 and 1.9 meters is actually 
99.7%. In other words, the probability that y, which represents the student's height between 1.3 and 1.9 is equal to 99.7%. So this is the next thing that I'm going to talk about the basics of the bell shape curve, which is the empirical rule. So within one standard deviation of the mean, generally speaking, the probability is actually 68% or 0 0.68. And uh, within two standard deviation of the mean, the probability is actually 95%. Within three standard deviation of the mean, the probability is actually 99.7%. All right. To state this in the curve itself, within one standard deviation of mean, that means from here all the way to here. All right. This is 68%. Because this mean actually represents the symmetric line of the curve. So this is 34% and this is also 34%, All right? And within two standard deviation of mean, which is from here all the way to here, okay, this whole chunk here is actually 95%, All right? And then within three standard deviation of the mean, that means from here all the way to here, this part here, this part here, the probability is actually 99.7%. Take it by the green line. I know it's a little bit messy, but that's the whole idea of it. All right. And the next thing I'm going to talk about is the area under the curve. So area under the curve this actually represents the probability, right? So when you want to calculate the area under the curve, you usually want to integrate the curve. So what's the formula of this curve? The formula of this curve is actually equals to one over two pi or square root two pi sigma square e to the power of negative y minus mu, the holding square, divided by 2 sigma square. So this portion down here is actually my equation of the curve. Right? So how do you actually find the probability between two values? So let's say I want to find the probability of a student height to be between 1.4 to 1.55, right? So what you would do is that you would take the area under the curve, that means by integrating the curve, or the in integrating the equation of the curve, with the lower limit of 1.4 and the upper limit of 1.55, and substitute the mean to be 1.6, and your sigma to be 0 0.1, and then work out this integration to find the probability of the height of the student to between 1.4 and 1.55. All right, so that's the whole idea of the bell-shaped curve. And that's it for this video. Thank you very much, and I will see you in the next video.